Namaste and welcome to the session with Vivian. I will tell the title a little bit later. I'm your moderator for today's session. And my name is Jenny. And we have our team, BSM team, handling the tech, tech part, Ms. Sajmina, and logistic part, Ms. Nripa. And video is Ms. Asta. Uh, give me some time, okay. So the title for this session, who are these people and what are they doing in my story? This is the title. It is really interesting. And we have our author, Vivian van der Velde. She is the author of 39 books, book number 40, involving a squirrel who gets involved in a play at a children's school, will be published next year. Ranging in age from picture book through books for early readers, as well as for children from eight to 12 years old, and also with teens, most of her books have some element of fantasy, including talking animals, ghosts, stories of magic, reimagined fairy tales, and some stories based on not yet invented futuristic technology. Her first book was A Hidden Magic about a princess who needs to rescue a prince. Never trust a dead man, which is about a young man who forms an alliance with a dead man to solve a murder that won an Edgar Award for Best Mystery. Heir Apparent, which is about a girl who is caught in a virtual reality Computer Game won the Anne Spencer Lindbergh Prize in Children's Literature. Her books have been translated in French, Dutch, Thai, Turkish, and more. But this is the very first time she has participated in an international festival, and she is delighted for the opportunity. Likewise, we are also delighted to welcome Vivian to our Bal Sahita Matsav. Welcome, Vivian. I am so happy to be here. Uh, this is, as Miss Jenny said, uh, the first time that I have visited Nepal. Um, I wish that I could be there in person to see all of you, but um, here I am. Uh, I know that this has been a challenging and somewhat scary uh, couple of years for everybody. Um, I think the one advantage um, of doing things virtually rather than in person is that there can be more of you and I can go places that I would uh, not have an, an opportunity to else, else of otherwise. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about books and about writing and about mostly about stories. And I want each of you to keep in mind that each one of you is totally different from anybody else in the world. You are different from anybody who ever lived before or anybody who ever will live in the future. You are a unique combination of genes that you inherited from your parents, and also your experiences, the friends you've made, the teachers you have, the books you've read, the places you've gone, uh, the movies you've seen, all of those have shaped who you are. And because you are one of a kind, that means any stories that you might have are yours and yours alone. You have stories that nobody else could tell. And I want you to remember that when I'm encouraging you to tell stories. Now, we're going to be mostly concentrating on stories that are written down in books or short stories. But there are many ways to share stories. You can tell, tell stories uh, out loud. You can tell stories by um, illustration, by drawing, by photography, by singing, by dance, um, by uh, sculpture. There, there's all sorts of ways to tell stories. But however you choose to share your story, it's, I hope you do choose to share them. OK, I am going to do a share screen. Uh, and we will, 
hopefully be able to do that without a problem. Okay, I am not saying that we are sharing. Do we have any technological help here? Share sound. Oh, I'm sorry, that's my problem. I was I was being yes, technologically not right. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do the slideshow from the beginning. So there we are. And again, delighted to be here. My very first thing that I'm gonna to talk to you about is where do ideas come from? And they can come from anywhere. I'm just gonna share a few of the ways that I have gotten ideas. Uh, when I was growing up, I very much liked uh, movies and I especially liked the Disney fairy tales. Um, this is a picture of Snow White. This is a picture of me. You can tell I look absolutely nothing like Snow White. I had hair that was going off in all directions. I had to wear glasses. You can see I don't have my, uh, my sweater buttoned correctly. And I could not sing. I could not dance. I have my little stuffed tiger with me as a friend. But I never had animals come in and help me with the housework the way uh, in, in the Disney movies it happens. Um, but I decided I wanted to write a story, <clears throat> excuse me, that used some of the elements of fairy tales um, that had, um, in this case, you can see there's a witch and there's a dragon and there's a giant that's kind of peeking out between the trees and there's these little creatures that are hanging around. Um, so I wanted to use some of the things that were um, in most fairy tales, but wanted to make the character a little bit more like me and the people that I know. So you can see this is a princess. She comes from a very poor country, so she does not have a fancy gown. But you notice that her hair is going off in all directions the way that mine was. And she needs to rescue a prince. This isn't a prince. The prince isn't in this picture. She needs to rescue a prince who's gotten her, himself into trouble. And she, one of the people that she finds is a wizard who is very young. So he doesn't have very many magical powers, but he's trying to help her. So that was one way that I wrote a story was by thinking what I wanted and putting myself into the story. Um, this is called A Class Pets Plus One Squirrel Divided by One Dog Equals Chaos. Miss Jenny mentioned that my book that's coming out, actually will be at the end of this year, uh, is about a squirrel who gets involved in a play at a children's school. This is another adventure um, with that same squirrel. And these stories about the squirrel came, I, I don't know if you have squirrels in Nepal. I think that there are squirrels just about everywhere. Um, but we have squirrels in our backyard. And my husband prefers birds. So you can see he's got a bunch of bird feeders out here. But notice the squirrel is hanging around. The squirrel thinks that all of these bird feeders are really squirrel feeders. And he will try very hard to get at the food, no matter how my husband sets it up, the squirrel finds ways to get in there. And this is a bird feeder that's right on our window and he's gotten into the bird feeder and he's eating the seeds that's there. So kind of watching what was going on, that was another way that I came to write a story. Um, this is called Three Good Deeds and it's about a boy who misbehaves and so there's a witch who turns him into a goose. My husband and I would walk in an area that had a lot of geese. And when the geese are far away, they look so cute and they look so peaceful. And what we found was that when we were trying to walk, especially when they had the baby geese, 
the parents would get very protective. And they were thinking that we were walking where we were because we intended to grab one of their chicks. So they got very protective and they would bob their heads as a warning for us to stay away. They would hiss and sometimes they would come at us with their, with their wings spread out. And they're a lot taller um, when they're underground coming at you than they look when they're in the water. Um, but I was interested in the geese because of the way they were acting. And so I ended up doing a lot of research. I am not someone who would write a nonfiction book the story of geese or a, a day in the life of a goose. Um, that isn't the kind of thing that I do. So I wrote a story about a boy who turns into a goose, but that was as a result of research that I did. Air Apparent uh, came about because I like to play computer games. I'm guessing maybe some of you like to do that too. Uh, so this is a story that takes place in the future when we assume that there is a technology that lets the player actually feel as though he or she is in the game. Now, if it was just a story about a girl playing a game and being frustrated because things weren't going right in the game, that isn't really anything that's important. If she wins or if she loses, it doesn't make that big a, di a difference. Um, so I had to have what was going on in real life have an impact on what's happening to her in the story. So using my interests, that's, that's another um, way that, that I uh, come to write stories. Uh, now You See It is about a girl who has a pair of, she finds a pair of magic glasses. This is me wearing my first pair of glasses. So I was wearing them from a very young age. And most stories that I read did not include the main character wearing glasses. So that was one thing that was kind of in the back of my mind. But at one point, my husband, my daughter and I were in the car and we were driving and I had these glass, these sunglasses, um, they had just a slight pinkish tinge to them. It, it made, as we were driving, I said, wow, look at that incredible pink flowering bush. Isn't that the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? And my husband said, uh-huh. And then I'd say, and look at the sunset. That is the most marvelous sunset ever. And my daughter said, I guess so. And then I took the glasses off and okay, it was a pretty bush, but it was the same as other bushes. It was a pretty sunset, but it wasn't that different from other sunsets. My family started referring to those sunglasses as the glasses that let me see things that other people couldn't see. And I liked that, but I didn't want to just write about a girl who could see pretty bushes and pretty sunsets. So when she finds these magic glasses, they let her see into the world of the supernatural. And Remembering Raquel is one of only two books that I've written that does not have any fantasy element to it. Um, it's also a book that came with two ideas that came to form it. One, when I would drive, I would sometimes see something like this by the roadside. What had happened here was that there had been a car accident and someone had died and friends and family of the, the people that died set up this little memorial. And I would see that sometimes and sometimes it was very specific. Um, here's someone that has a, uh, a balloon that has a dog with a heart. Um, there's also um, things here that make me think because of the Mexican flag and the Mexican hat that this was someone um, who had a uh, Mexican heritage. Um, and this makes me very, very sad because it uh, looks like it might have been a child who died. Um, so I started thinking about people remembering someone who had died. And I decided that I wanted to do that, but I wanted to write about a character that doesn't appear in the story 
before she's dead and she doesn't appear in the story after she's dead. She is just talked about. Each chapter is from the viewpoint of a different person uh, who knew her or who maybe didn't know her so well, but they, they want their opinion known. Uh, and so you get to know her and some of the stories kind of contradict each other. One will say she was very shy and another one will say, no, she was very funny. Um, and that's because different people see us in different ways. And sometimes we act differently in one situation from another. So for example, your parents would probably describe you in a different way than your teachers might. And your school friends might describe you in a different way from your teachers. And maybe you're walking by someone and you accidentally, you don't even know that you did it, you bump into the arm of the person who's holding a bunch of books and the books drop and you didn't see that happen. And so you don't stop to, to help that person pick up the books. That person would have a different way of describing you than anybody else would. So I wanted to describe this girl from different points of view, and you have to put together what you think the girl was like. And this story, Stolen, came about because of a picture. Uh, and this is a picture, I do not know who this girl is, and we will be talking about pictures more when we're doing this uh, writing workshop a little bit later. Um, but I saw this picture and this girl has, I think, a mysterious smile. To me, it looks as though she has a secret. And I don't know who she is, so there's no way I could find out what her secret is. So I had to make up what I thought her secret might be. Okay, so you need to work at writing. When I first start writing, you can see this is written in pencil. It's written every other line. I've crossed things out. I've added things. Um, I don't know if you can see on your screens, here's something that's crossed out and then it has dots under it. That's my symbol to myself to say, never mind the crossing out, keep it the way it was. All the while that I'm writing, I'm trying to make the story be as good as possible right from the very beginning because nobody wants a book that needs a sticker that says this gets good at page 10 or something exciting happens in chapter two. You want it right from the beginning. Once I've worked on it, but, but the first thing I do is I write the story down and, and then I go back and I start making changes. And once I type it up, I see even more places that I wanna change. Writing is not like math. With math, you have one right way of doing something. You say two plus two is four. And it doesn't equal three if you're really tired and it doesn't equal seven on Tuesdays. Two plus two is always four. But with writing, writing, there is not one right way to do it because some people like a lot of this, to read a lot of descriptions. Some people like to read romance stories. Some people don't want description. They don't want romance stories. So there isn't one book or one story that's right for everybody. So there isn't one story that's right for everybody. So don't, don't worry about that some people don't get it, but I try to make my stories be as good as possible for the biggest number of people. Eventually what I send to a publishing company, whether I send it through the mail or whether I send it uh, electronically, it kind of looks like this. And I don't, I don't have to worry about the pictures. That is something the publishing company um, decides who's gonna do the pictures and what pictures they should be. But once I send the picture, I'm sorry, the, the, the words, then with my first story, I thought, okay, I've written the story, I've revised the story, I sent it to a publisher and I thought, what's gonna happen now is they're gonna say, ah, Vivian, we love this story. This is incredible. Let's talk who's gonna star in the movie version of this. Yeah, that didn't happen. What happened was they sent it back to me and they said, we don't want it. So I was disappointed, but I sent it again. I ended up sending it out to 32 different publishers who said no before number 33 said yes. So I don't want you to become discouraged if someone is saying no to your stories. A lot of writers have had even more rejections than, than 32 for their first book. But finally, 
one editor said yes. Now an editor is a lot like a teacher. A teacher for each one of you tries to encourage you in ways to make the story better. If you are writing something that is just for you, you know exactly what you mean and you don't need a teacher, you don't need an editor. But once you start wanting to share the story, then people might have questions. And the editor is there to act as the go-between between between me and the thoughts that I have in my head that I've put down on the paper and all of the readers. So in this case, the editor here wrote something that he liked and here wrote something that he thought that I should cut uh, a little bit and make it shorter. One of the things that an editor might say is the story is moving a little slowly here. If an editor says the story is moving slowly, that's the editor's polite way of saying, I'm bored, is anything ever going to happen here? And I have to decide, how do I fix the problem of the editor is bored? Because if the editor is bored, some of the readers would be bored also. So if the editor is bored, there's two things I could do. I could make that part of the story shorter. I could cut out maybe some description, or maybe I would say, oh, I have too much dialogue here. But I could do the exact opposite. I could make the story longer there, but make sure it was more interesting. So I might say, for example, all of the children were listening to the author talk. And so they were looking at their screens and they did not know that behind them, a shadow was beginning to take form, a very dark, hungry shadow. Did I make you look? I hope I did. Um, it doesn't matter if it's something scary or something funny. I have something that I think might be more interesting so that you aren't saying, how much longer before I get to the end of this? But you're saying, oh, I wonder what happens next. Okay, so it's your turn. Um, if you uh, have something to write with, I want you to write, write things down. But if you don't, you just think about how you would answer these questions because I'm, I have a bunch of questions. Um, the first thing that I want you to do is to think about three things about yourself maybe things that you're an expert in. Um, so maybe you play a sport, maybe you uh, play a musical instrument, um, maybe you've lived in one place all of your life, but maybe your family has moved around a lot. Maybe you're an only child, maybe you're one of several children. Those are things that you know about that people that don't have those experiences would not be able to write about as convincingly. Um, so for example, if you know how to play uh, football or soccer, um, you could write about that much more convincingly than I could because I would need to do a lot of research to be able to know what exactly was going on in the game, what was the object of the game, how often you need to practice, um, where it might hurt after practice. Um, those are all things that you would know. So I want to give you just a, a couple of seconds to, to try to think about three things about yourself. And something else that I want you to keep in mind is, um, we're going to be writing as you're going to be writing uh, later on in your life is describing a scene and using all five senses. Most often we rely on sight to get in our information and hearing. Um, so when someone is writing a story, we'll very often concentrate on what the character is seeing, what the character is hearing, especially if other characters are talking. But I want you to keep in mind that you have other senses, including the smell, the sense of touch, and the sense of taste. And keep those in mind when you're writing a scene. 
um, I don't want you to have your character walk into a room and for you to say, this is what he saw, this is what he heard, this is what he smelled, this is what uh, the, the texture of, of the walls or the rug was, and this was what he tasted. You don't want to list those things, but choose the one thing that you think is most important and mention that first, whether it's a person walks into the room and smells that something very good is baking. And so the, then the character looks around to see who, who is there and who's doing the cooking. Um, so start with one and then add other things as the scene progresses. So maybe the person sees it is gr the grandmother that is cooking something delicious. And so then the character says, hello, grandmother, or however you say grandmother and, and Nepalese. Um, and then she answers and then he's hearing something. Taste is usually the hardest thing to bring into a, uh, a book because most often your characters don't go around tasting a whole bunch of things, but, but you can do it. Um, and that will make a scene come alive uh, much more if you use something that's unexpected. Okay, so you need to pick a character when you're writing a story. And often it is easiest to start with when you have a picture. I showed you that one picture of the girl that I thought had the mysterious smile. Um, and that came about because I like to look at old pictures. And when I'm doing a writing workshop, I like to share pictures and have um, people choose who it is they're going to write about. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of pictures. Um, I don't use pictures of people that I know. I don't want to have a picture of my granny and have someone write, she was a very mean and nasty lady. I don't want you writing that about my grandmother. So I'm not going to show a picture of her. I don't want to share pictures of anybody from sports or movies that you're likely to know because then you will already have information about that person. So I take pictures from the internet or from other places that I get them and I uh, share them with, with people. So I'm gonna do that. Um, I also have, I, I want you to, if, if there's a picture that you like the looks of the character, keep that character, that person in mind. Um, but then I selected a few pictures that I'm gonna show in between each picture, I'm sorry, each question that I ask in case you need to wanna to choose one of those characters and, and you need to see them again. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through these kind of quickly. And notice in some cases, there's more than one person. And I think it's a good idea to choose one of the people to talk about, but also to keep in mind what's going on in the background or with the other characters. Okay, so some questions that you need to ask yourself. And, and these are the, uh, the pictures that I chose in case you can't remember any of the others. So the first thing you need to know about your person is you need to give that person a name. And we're not trying to necessarily guess what the person in the picture's name really is, just you pick a name and also pick an age because some of these uh, people look more like adults. And if you wanna write about them when they are a child, that is absolutely fine. If the person in the picture is young and you wanna write about them when they're older, that's fine too. The picture is just there, hopefully to inspire you. Okay, so again, there's, there's the pictures. For at least one of the following questions, include something that you thought about in your own background. The characters will seem much more realistic if you choose something that is important to you. And you notice that when I talked to you about how I got my ideas for my stories, 
that a lot of times there was a personal connection to me, something that I had been wondering about, something that I had noticed. But my first question is, what makes your person happy? Um, that's often the way a story starts is with the character being happy. And then something happens. So what makes your person sad? Stories are about conflict. They are about things going wrong. We often like to see how our character, how the characters in a story are solving problems. Um, because if we have a story where everybody is happy throughout the whole story, then nothing much is happening. Uh, and, and it doesn't make for an interesting story. I want you to think about what makes your person angry. Now, when I do workshops in school, sometimes there'll be, and it's usually a girl who will choose a picture of someone that she really likes. So maybe, maybe the, the, the girl in the, in the classroom has chosen this girl. And she thinks that this girl has a very nice face. And she tells me, no, this girl doesn't get angry. When I say get angry, I don't mean that your character um, hits somebody. I don't mean that she shouts at somebody. I don't mean that she kicks her foot through the wall, but something is going to upset her. Um, if she's seen other people getting bullied, she might get upset. Um, if she's seen something wrong in the world, she's going to get upset. If somebody treats her or uh, somebody in her family in an unfair way, she's going to get angry about that. So think about what makes your character angry. What is something your person is afraid of? Um, whether it's something like snakes or whether it's something like being alone, that's something that you can have your character confront later in the story and seeing how the person deals with his or her fears um, lets us know more about that person. What is your person's life outlook? And by, by that, I mean, is he or she generally pleased with life and himself or herself? Is this someone who is depressed? Is this someone who is ready to blame other people for all problems? Um, how your person looks at life and looks at himself will inform how he is reacting to other people. Name one thing that your person is good at. By giving your character certain interests or saying he's good at this or she excels at that, um, that makes your character more balanced, more well-rounded. It isn't all about the adventure that your character is going to be going through. Um, name something, whether it's dancing or public speaking, um, it, it doesn't make any, any difference. You choose what it is and may, maybe he likes to collect something. And, and those things make your character seem more real. Sorry, I'm supposed to have this up while I'm, while I'm talking to you. Name one thing your person is not good at or can't do at all. Again, this is gonna be very important for later in the story. If I say my character can't swim early in the story, you have to know that sooner or later, I am gonna throw my character into the water or put him into a situation where he needs to swim um, to rescue a friend who's in trouble. He needs to get someplace that he can only get to by swimming. Um, making the character, again, confront what he's afraid of, what he can't do, uh, or what he can't do well. These are all things that add tension and excitement to the story. I want you to have in mind two secrets about your person. One, something your character hides from everybody or almost everybody else. Um, maybe that's something that he's only told one friend and then suddenly a lot of people know about it. So he knows that the friend has betrayed him. Or maybe it's something that he's trying to keep secret from everybody, 
but still somehow people know about it. What happens then? I also want you to think something you know about the character that the character doesn't know. And maybe he or she will find out about it during the course of the story, but maybe not. And by that, I mean, um, maybe your character is more like her mother than she realizes, or maybe it's his best friend that betrayed him, or maybe his parents aren't who he, he or she thinks they are. Um, and again, that, that might be something that, that's important to the story, or maybe it's just something for you to know that helps you understand your character better. I want to know what does your person want or more important, what does your person need? Um, if, for example, your character wants to be the best student in school, okay, that's fine. But if your student needs, I'm sorry, if your character needs to be the best student because then he or she will win a scholarship and be able to go to this other school and further the education so that he or she can get to have the career wanted, then wanting to be the best, because there's only one scholarship given, wanting to be the best becomes very important. You need to figure out what stands in the way of your person meeting the goal. I'm sorry, I muted myself at some point. Um, maybe standing in the way of, of your, your character getting what he wanted, and we're gonna stick with that idea of the student who needs to win the scholarship. Maybe what gets in the way is that there's another student who's also very good and is in competition. Um, but maybe, so, so then you have a case of two people that want the same thing and only one can get it. Um, but maybe the problem isn't another student who is really good, maybe it's the best friend who keeps distracting the student from the studies. Um, maybe the person himself, and I'm saying himself or herself, e either way. Um, maybe she's the kind of person that gets really caught up in the little details. And so that means that she doesn't finish the entire project because she's concentrating on one small part of it. So she doesn't finish the project in time and that puts getting the scholarship in jeopardy. Uh, maybe it's that the family is too poor um, to send the character to a special activity that would help. Um, or maybe the weather gets in the way, maybe it snows and there's a snowstorm the day of the test and that makes it harder for your um, character to get to the test. Um, I've got those questions on my website. So this is my, what my website will look like. And you would click on where it says photo albums and I would have a list of those questions if you need to uh, see them more um, and uh, take more time with them. Okay, so I want to thank you for coming, but I also want to talk about a few um, other things. Um, one of the things that I, I'm going to stop sharing the screen at this point. Stop share. There we go. Um, one of the things that I want you to concentrate on is, I, I said maybe your student who wants to win the scholarship has another student who is trying to get that same scholarship. If you are writing about someone who is the person who is standing in the way of your character getting what he or she wants, I want you to be careful about how you write that person and don't make the villain of the story be totally evil. Um, there's an actor in the United States from when I was growing up. I know that you won't know him. Well, I'm guessing that you won't know him um, because he's from a long time ago. His name was Lee Marvin. And 
Lee Marvin was in a lot of movies and very often he played the bad guy. And once when he was interviewed, somebody asked him, how do you feel about always playing the villain? How do you feel about playing the bad guy? And he said, I don't play bad guys. I play someone who is doing the best that he can in a situation. And he doesn't think of himself as bad. He isn't being bad just to be bad. He is being bad to get ahead in life, um, to get something that he wants. Um, so for example, if I wanted, let's say the pen that one of you is writing with, I might say, oh, that is a fantastic pen. I need to have that pen. And so I would take it from you. That's not the right thing to do, but I have a reason for doing it because I think that this is a wonderful pen that will help me to be able to write better. Or I might think, I don't think the person who owned this pen deserved to have this pen. For whatever reason, I don't like that person. And so I, I wanna take the pen away uh, to punish him. So have your, characters, all of your characters do something for a reason. And it might be a good idea to use one of the things that you wrote for your background and give that to your bad guy to make that person seem more real, to also make him seem more rounded, uh, well-rounded. One of the things that I can encourage you to do is maybe think about a real situation in your life where possibly someone that you used to think of as a friend, for some reason did something that hurt you very much. Write about what happened. Now write it again from the former friend's point of view without making that character, without making your friend be the villain say, well, she was mean and that's why she did it. Think about why he or she might've done it. That will help you in your writing it might even help you in your relationship with your friend once, once you understand one of the reasons that they might have done what they did. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to say is that you very often will hear writers giving the advice, show, don't tell. And what they mean by when they say that is don't just say the character was nervous show the character being nervous. Does she bite her nails? Does she twirl her hair? Um, what if the boy is worried? What does he do when he's worried? Maybe he eats a lot when he's worried, or maybe he can't eat when, when he's worried, or, or maybe he taps his fantastic pen against the table uh, when, when he's worried to, to kind of distract himself. Think about something specific and don't just use the adjective uh, nervous or, or worried. Um, another piece of advice, and, and I'm almost done here, and then we'll, we'll open up for, um, for questions in a little bit. Um, another piece of advice that you've probably heard is write what you know about. Um, it's sort of good advice because, you know, if I said, if, if I was wanting to write about soccer or football, uh, or cricket or just about any other sport, I wouldn't be able to do a good job because I had never done it. So it's a good idea to know about it. But on the other hand, I would say, don't write necessarily what you know about, but what you're passionate about, what you're willing to learn about. So like with the geese, I was willing to do the research to find out how geese act, uh, how little geese act, how they act when the, like one of the things that I learned is that just before the babies are born, the geese molt, they lose the, some of their feathers. And the feathers that they lose are the feathers that would allow them to fly. So that is nature's way of making sure that the parents stay with the babies, while they are young and needing protection. That isn't something that I just knew. That is something that I find, found out because that was what I wanted to do was to find out all that there was to know about geese. So whatever it is that you're willing to make yourself an expert in, 
that's, that's what you need to write about. Um, the last thing I want to say is, why do we read? We read for a variety of reasons, but mostly I'm going to put them into two categories. We read to find characters who are just like us. That way we know that we are not alone in the world. And that's a very good reason to be reading. Another reason to read is to find people or characters or situations who are absolutely nothing like us. And that lets us experience the world. It maybe gives us more empathy as we learn about other, other people. And that is a very good reason to be reading also. And those are also some of the reasons why we write. It's to explore our own personal feelings and see how we feel about something. And also to be able to experience things like, okay, so I have never been a goose. I have never been in a lot of the situations that my characters are. Sometimes I write from the point of view of a, of a guy. Uh, sometimes I write from the point of view of someone who was back in history. Um, and, th and that lets me explore the questions that I want to explore. Uh, for example, let me just I don't have a slide for it, but show you this one book, 23 minutes. I'm not sure if you're seeing that straight on or if it's reversed the way it is for me. Um, have you ever done something embarrassing and you wish that you could just go back in time and redo that so that you oh, don't say that silly thing that got you in trouble uh, or so that you aren't, oh my goodness, my shirt was, or my skirt was, was, was tucked into, into my pants so that it looked like I had a big ruffle. If that was the good thing, the, the bad thing would be so that, oh, no, oh, people were seeing my undergarments. That's awful. I want to go back. I want to rearrange myself before I step out into the room and people see that. So it was thinking about things like that that made me write 23 minutes where a girl has the ability to go back um, and relive the last 23 minutes so that she can make things better. Uh, so think about the things that, that um, you're interested in. Okay, Miss Jenny, I think it is maybe time to uh, to go to questions. Do you think it's it's time to do that? Or, I mean, I can keep on talking about writing for about a day and a half, but uh, I'd rather be answering the questions that that uh, some of the students have. Okay. We will go, go to the question section, but before we had that, I just want to, share what, how I felt attending a session. First of all, choosing the characters. And I feel you choose the characters you connect with. And the list of things that you shared, like the timeline that you had for your journey as an author, it was really wonderful. Right to the goose, to other things that you saw or you related to, give you the idea of the character that we can choose to write a book. Mm -hmm. Then came all the questions that really structured how we write. It is really wonderful to have all those questions. And I've just posted the site that you mentioned where all the questions are. That will okay. really give, yes, that will really give some idea for the writers who are here, the students or others, aspiring writers, to have a structure of how things will go for the character. And it's really wonderful that you provide all the questions. I'm sure we didn't give some time to the, the audience to go through the questions because we had a lot of questions. So I just posted- Right, not a lot of- that's like, Yes, a lot of questions. So it's really wonderful. And the, the end part when you share that, you read when you connect or you read when you want to empathize or show some empathy or explore to some other dimensions. Mm -hmm. That is really wonderful. Thank you so much for- giving so much information and then giving your time and energy for this session. And uh, we have questions. Uh, Ms. Nirpa, can you head, give me the questions or I can just allow some, uh, those who are raising their hands maybe. Ms. Nirpa, do you have questions for me? Because I'm not getting the question directly. Yes, I think uh, we can ask them. Okay, I will uh, choose the person who is raising the hand. Kunga, can you ask your question? 
Okay, so my question is that where where do you get your writing style from? I'm sorry, where do I get what from? Where do you get your writing style from? Ideas. Yeah. The ideas, um, they, they can be from anywhere. Um, sometimes the setting, uh, I, I have been places and I say, oh, this is an interesting place and I need to set the story here. Um, or it can be something that I've overheard. Um, one of my stories came about because I didn't have my reading glasses on and I saw someone's business card and I thought that the card said that this person worked for Cursus Incorporated. And I thought, okay, so like, is this a witch who has her own company and, and she wants me to go to her website? Uh, it turned out that it said Cruises Incorporated. It was a, a travel agent uh, who had um, posted their card someplace. Um, so whatever it is that excites you, and makes you want to write and share some aspect of a story. That that's that's the good thing. Um, this idea about the squirrel who was involved in the school play. Um, I had the character of the squirrel already, um, and I wanted him to be in the school, disrupting the school, because that's that's just what the squirrel does. Everywhere the squirrel goes, the squirrel thinks that everybody loves him and that um, everybody wants to hear his opinion about things. Um, but he finds out that there's going to be a play in the school, and his friend uh, a rat uh, who is a class pet um, wants to see the play. And so the two of them go to where the play is being presented, thinking that nobody will notice them. And of course, everybody notices them. I'll, there's a lot of chaos that comes from that. So it was a combination of a character that I already had. Plus, I had been involved in school plays when I was a kid. Uh, and when I was in school, so I wanted to explore that. So use, use your own experiences and use those as a um, jumping off point. You can change what happened to you. Um, you don't have to write it exactly the way it happened. Um, for example, I have never been chased by a dragon as happens in one of my stories, but I have come face to face with a very mean dog that I am convinced was intent on having me for lunch. So I was able to use the fear and the anxiety that I had from that and make it bigger by having it be a dragon. So thank you for that question. You're welcome. We have Monita Powell ready with a question. Yes, Monita? so when did you? Uh, we can't hear you. Can you say it again? Monita? Okay, maybe next time. Next we have Hiri. Can you ask your question? does it take for you to write a book? I'm sorry, how long ago? How long did, do you take to write a book? Ah, well, that depends. My very first book took the longest amount of time. Uh, that was a hidden magic. And it took so long because it wasn't a class assignment. Nobody was saying, if you write it, we will publish it. It was just something I had always wanted to do was to, to write a story. And so I started writing the story about the princess and she meets the prince and he gets himself into trouble. And then I thought, oh, I don't know what's going to happen next. So I stopped working on that. And instead, I started working on um, crocheting, um, which is sort of like knitting. I don't know if you do that. Um, or I could get distracted by my friends who said, hey, let's go shopping together or let's go see the movie. And I was always distracted by reading other books. But once I had started that story, it was almost as though the characters 
started calling me. I don't normally hear voices. I don't want you to be afraid of me. But it was almost as though the characters were saying, you got us into trouble. What's going to happen next? So I went back and I figured out what would happen next. I got to another point. I didn't know what was going to happen. And I stopped working and I did other things. And that happened over and over again. It took me two years to write that story. And what I've found since then is that if I write a little bit every day, I get more done, I get better ideas. It's sort of like exercise. The more you do, the easier it becomes. Or it's sort of like puppetry. The more you, you work with your puppet, the, uh, the more alive that puppet seems to be. Uh, so that first story took um, about two years to write. It took two years to, while well, I was sending it out to the 32 publishers who said no. And it took two years while we were waiting for the illustrator uh, to do the picture. Uh, the illustrator is Trina Shart Hyman. She had just won a big award in the United States for illustrating books. And so the publisher sent her my book and she said, yes, she wanted to do the pictures for the cover and, and uh, one for each chapter, but she had already agreed to do other people's books. So I needed to wait two years before she did the pictures. So it took six years from the time I said, I think I'll write a book to my actually being able to hold the book in my hand. No other book has taken that long uh, at, at each step. Some of the books that I've written, it's taken me probably closer to six months. And that's between the time that I get the idea and I write it and I revise it and then I send it out. And most of my books do not have um, like 23 Again, minutes. Uh, we have a lot of hands. So I'm just trying to, uh, okay, to I'll, quickly I'll answer, answer the questions. And okay. we are short of time. Um, so next we have Sanvi. Can you ask a question real quick? When and why did you start writing? Oh, oh, oh the dragon is speaking now. <laughs> okay. Uh, when, when and where? I started writing when I was younger than you, but I wasn't sending that out. It was when my daughter was born and I was staying home with her rather than uh, going to a daily job that I started writing A Hidden Magic and then sending it out. Um, so I Thanks. was 27 at that time. Thank you. Next we have Sumeda. Can you ask a um, question? So whenever you usually think of a story, then in your point of view, what part of the story do you think of first? That can depend. That is a very good question, uh, but it can depend. Sometimes I start with a character. Sometimes I start with a situation. Like one of my books, I wanted to explore what it was like for someone who wanted to get revenge on the people who had done, um, who had accused her of something that that they knew she hadn't done. So, so they had done something bad to her and she wanted to get revenge. I wanted to explore the idea that she works at getting revenge, but in the end that doesn't give her happiness. Uh, so that it started with the idea and then the, and then the characters came. Uh, sometimes I will start with the setting. Um, it, it, can, it can be anything. To me, characters are the most important. If you're interested in the characters, you, are willing to read a, a, a long story about them. If you aren't interested in the characters, even if buildings are blowing up and the whole universe hangs in the balance, but you don't care about the characters, you don't care if the universe ends for that particular character. Thank you. We have Akrish with his hand. Okay, do you have a question? Yes, Akrish. You're muted. Okay. Akrish, okay, you're still muted. I think we'll go to there we go. Ruby. Okay, easier. Okay. Seeing that you have uh, included all the elements in your stories, 
Uh, did you have a teacher or did you just get inspired from the book that you read? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Uh, his question is, you have included all the elements in the story. So you wanted to ask whether you were inspired by a teacher or you just got it by yourself, all these elements in the story. Um, both. The, the, the answer is, is actually both. Um, I always liked stories. Um, I would say to myself, I really like that story, but do you know what would make it better? And, and I would, you know, maybe change, change the ending, make sure that it was a happy ending or, or I would make the character be a little bit more like myself. Um, but I had the encouragement of several teachers who told me that I could write and that I could write well. And I especially had the encouragement of my dad. My dad um, never got published, but he was interested in writing plays. Um, and so he also told me that I could be whatever I wanted to be and that my stories were more fantastic than anybody else's stories. And it's good when you're young to, oh, it's good at any time in your life to have somebody uh, love you that unconditionally. We have uh, Ruby with a question. Greetings, Miss Vivian. So uh, my questions, my question is, which book do you find the best amongst the ones you you written? I'm uh, the favorite, the favorite book that you have written. Oh, that's a terrible question. Please leave the room. No, I'm, I'm not serious there. It's a very hard question um, because I spend a lot of time with each story trying to make the characters be likable, trying to make the situation believable, trying to make you be as worried as possible. Are they going to succeed in what they want? Um, but I'm going to, I can't limit it to one. I'm going to say two. A Hidden Magic is the first one I wrote. It proved to me that I could be a writer because I wrote it almost 40 years ago. There's a lot of things that I would do differently now because I've learned more about writing. I think the story starts a little bit slowly. I think um, I needed to jump in faster. I think that I could have made the funny parts funnier and the tense parts more tense. Um, but it's still my favorite because it proved to me that I could do it. Um, and another of my favorites is Air Apparent because it involves the computer game and it just was so much fun to write because I've played so many computer games. And any time that I thought that maybe people's interest might be um, beginning to, to not be so interested, I could throw in something like, okay, so then a whole horde of ghosts started following her or then a dragon came by and it didn't need to make a lot of sense in real life because she was playing a game. Okay. So we have say, those, those two are my favorites. On to here with this question. So my question is, have you ever written a story that you feel like kind of describes you? I'm, I'm sorry, could you speak louder? I, I'm, I'm I will ask. Have you written any story that really describes you? There's a little bit of me in, in all of the stories, um, probably the most in uh, A Hidden Magic, um, where there is this princess who is unsure of herself. She's a little bit shy. She tends to be quiet, even though you're looking at me and saying, you don't tend to be quiet. But um, I do tend to be quiet in situations where I'm not teaching. Um, and so I, I would say she, she has the most of me, although I think that, that she has more courage than I do. Uh, that, that's, that's the one thing about stories is that I can set things up um, so I can, I, can make the, I can make characters smarter than I am um, just by the way that I present things. Um, you know, sometimes somebody might say something mean to me and what I would say is, 
yeah, yeah, you think so? And, and that's, that's kind of a pretty silly answer. But then half an hour later, I think, oh, what I should have said was, well, the reasons that you are wrong are one, this, two, this, and three, that. Um, when I'm writing, I can set it up and can think of exactly what she should say before she even comes into the situation. Uh, but I, I would say that, that I am probably most like the characters in, um, I would say, Air Apparent and in, uh, maybe that's why those are my two favorite, and in A Hidden Magic. Thank you. Yes, Sri, can you share your question? Yes, ma'am. What was the one of the most surprising things you learned in creating your books? And do you have any suggestions to help me become a better writer? Um, How to become a did you get the question? Did you get the question? I, I, I heard part of it. <laughs> so maybe, maybe you need to tell me the first part. I heard up suggestions to make a better writer. Yes. And the first one, can you repeat? I just, I just kind of forgot. Yes, yes, what can you repeat one... the first? Yes. Okay. What was one of the most surprising things you learned in creating your books? Ah, okay. One of the most surprising things I learned um, about myself or about the world? Maybe about, about yourself. Character. Um, a lot of times I do not know where the story is going to end up. I start a story most often with a situation and have to work my way to the ending. Um, I told you in one of the stories, I wanted to explore what it was like for this girl to get revenge and then not be happy with that. In that case, I knew the entire story. Um, but in other cases, I did not know. So I was kind of surprised by things that happened along the way. Um, I think when you're writing the best advice that I would give is to read a lot. If you read a lot, you see what works for you and what doesn't. Uh, so for example, I'm someone who gets bored with a lot of description. I know a lot of people like a lot of description. I do not. I like just enough description that I can tell, are we set here and now? or are we set in the past or are we set in the future? Um, but I don't need to like know exactly what the main character is wearing unless it's important what she's wearing. Um, so read seeing what points in a story you get bored and then don't write those parts or write those parts you know, very, very quickly. Another thing that annoys me in a story is when something happens that I wasn't at all prepared for that. It seems as though the author just thought of it at the last minute. I said, I don't always know the ending of my stories, but when I go back and revise, I make sure that there's a little hint about that. So I don't say, and then the girl sprouted wings and flew away from the danger because Okay, we didn't know that she could sprout wings. And so it's not satisfying to have that happen. So I would try to figure out ways that maybe she's talking about seeing something from above. Or uh, maybe she talks that, yeah, she's ripped a lot of her clothing in the back and, and we don't know why. And it's because those wings sprout. Uh, so trying to think of ways to fix a problem that you see in a story um, will make you um, be able to write stories where those kind of problems don't, don't show up. So good luck to you with, with your writing. We have Ions. Please share your question. Okay. Who, uh, my question is, who is your uh, favorite author and why? Oh, that's another very, very hard question. Who is my favorite author? I get excited by a lot of, of good books. Um, I am mostly reading books for young people. I read very few books for adults. Um, and I very much uh, admire picture books. And when I see a picture book where the words and the pictures work together so well. I say, I want to do that too. 
Um, I know that uh, Bruce Koval and his wife, Catherine Koval, spoke at the opening ceremony um, in, in the morning, Friday morning. And um, he's one of my favorite authors. And, and I very much uh, like the, the pictures that she draws because the, the characters have so much expression in their faces. Um, even when she's doing just, just a kind of simple drawing, you can tell this is a nice person or this is a person you need to watch out for. Um, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say Bruce is one of my favorites. Thank you. Abhilasha, can you share your question? Um, so there might be days when you sit down to write, but then nothing comes to your brain. So what do you do on those days to get inspired? If nothing is coming into my brain about what I should be writing, if I've started a story, I reread the last part of it. And sometimes that gets me going more than if I just sit down and say, okay, now I'm going to start on chapter 12. Um, so if I'm having trouble with chapter 12, okay, so reread chapter 11. Uh, and sometimes the reason that I don't have an idea is because there's a problem in chapter 11 that I need to fix. Maybe I've written myself into a corner and I need to figure out how, how that character um, could get beyond that. Um, other ways is, is I like to go for walks. Sometimes just the, the action of moving um, and, and I'm not talking to anybody and I'm not listening to music. Um, so I've got to be thinking about something because otherwise I would get bored. Um, and sometimes that gets me started. Um, also, if, if you're having trouble settling, and, and, and I understand this problem, if you're having trouble before you start writing, you, you have like I, I finished one book and now I want to start another. And what of all the possible things in the world that I can write about, what am I going to choose to write about? Because I know that I'm going to be spending probably a, the next six months working on this story. Um, sometimes I will be thinking about um, other books and I don't want to say that I'm stealing an idea from another book, but I might think, what was it that I liked about that? Or what was it that I didn't like? One of, actually, I ended up writing three books because I had seen a ghost movie that I didn't think made any sense. And I said to myself, I want to write a story about a ghost that makes more sense. And it made more sense to me. I don't know if it made more sense to other people, but it was a challenge that I gave myself because of seeing this thing that I didn't like. But more often, I'm inspired by things that I really liked. Um, one thing that you might consider is what is going on in the year, any festival um, or time of year that you could be inspired to write about. Uh, yeah, so okay. um, uh, at what age did you start writing and how did you learn to write? I started writing... I'm going to say when I when I was your age or, or a little bit younger, um, I was always interested in writing. But I started writing to get published when I was in a, in that. Excuse me, an adult. What was the second part of that? When did I start writing? And and how did you learn to write? How did I learn to write? I learned to write mostly by reading. Um, I, when I went to college, we read a lot and we discussed books and, and that was all very good. Um, but it was by reading the kind of books that I wanted to write that, um, that made me learn how to write that. So for example, with picture books, um, I know from looking at picture books that I can't write something that, um, is going to be really long because the, the, the audience for picture books, they're really young and they don't have the patience for that. They don't wanna see a whole bunch of words. They're more interested in the picture. So that's something that I learned from looking at that book. From reading fantasy books, I know some of the things that are overdone uh, and some of the things maybe that I think need to be explored. So thank you, thank you for that question. These are really good questions. We have Sadhana, do you have your question ready? Yes, 
this man? Uh, now, who is your favorite character in your books? Why is he our favorite? Favorite, favorite character, character. In, my, in, in, my, in my books or in somebody yes. else's books? Your books. In my books. Um, you know, I've been writing about the squirrel and he is just a lot of fun to write about um, because he, he just, look, let me just read a tiny bit, if I can find. He starts off in chapter one saying, being a squirrel is the best thing in the world. And that is just the way he thinks. He, he just is so pleased with himself. He is so pleased with being a squirrel. Um, he talks about how squirrel mothers teach their young how to climb and how to land when they jump or fall, how to find food, how to bury food, how to find food once you've buried it. Uh, and he says, but people, People don't teach their children those things. They, they send their children to school. And hmm. so he's very curious about school and the things that they learn there. So he listens at the window to hear the stories that they tell. And, uh, but he, he, he gets some information, but he gets a lot of it wrong. So he's, he's a lot of fun for me to write about. Okay. We'll take, uh, I think all the questions are done. We are towards the end of the session. Okay, Thank you, I everyone. Just, okay. Can I just leave leave you with with um, a thought? Okay. Um, and that is that I hope that you enjoy reading. And I think if you're at the session, it's probably because you enjoy reading. Um, but if your teachers and your parents made you come here and you didn't really want to be here because you don't really like books. What I'm going to say, even though I don't know you, is I know why you don't like books, and that's because you haven't read the right thing yet. So I want you to talk to your teachers and your library. Do you have libraries in the school? Or yeah, yes, yes, um, we do. Talk, talk to them about the things that you're interested in, whether it, you want to learn more about a sports team or you want to learn more about a singer. Um, if you want to learn how things are made. Um, if you want to know which is the biggest, ugliest bug that ever crawled across the face of the earth, there's a book or there's a story about that. And your teachers and your librarians can point out to you whether it's a story in a magazine or a, a longer piece in a book, they'll point out where you can find that information. And once you're reading something that you're interested in, then you're going to find that you do like writing. So I, I want to wish you much joy and happiness in the books that you read, um, in any stories that you might try to tell, and depend on your teachers. I've, I've met just a few of them in the last couple of days, and they seem fantastic. You need to talk to them. So thank you, Miss Jenny. I'm sorry, you were, you were ready to wind down. I said, no, I have something else to say. <laughs> it's okay. It's really wonderful to hear all your insight. The presentation was for the story writing, but from the questions that we got from the audience, I really got to see the in-depth of how the authors write, the background stories, the little details, like, like who's your favorite character? Why is she or he your favorite character? And really loved about the squirrel. The squirrel is a happy-go-lucky man. I really started, I've just started to love squirrels. Thank you so much. <laughs> The audience, the participants who put up really good questions and made Vivian literally think about it now. Okay, my God, these are the questions that I need to answer. Thank you so much, everyone. It's a participation. And then Thank you. we have now, we need to end the session and everyone, thank you for participating. And then we love to see you become an author in future and read more books as we when always she focus. If you read, you'll become a writer or author. I, Thank I you. can tell from the questions they were asking. They are thinking like authors. Thank <laughs> you, everyone. Have a nice day. I mean, it's ended, but.
Tomorrow <laughs> we have a last day of Balsaiti Mahotsa. Thank you, Vivian, so much for visiting us My absolute and inspiring pleasure. us, inspiring yep. all of us, even me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.